Good afternoon, evening, morning, whatever time of the day it is, Blues. It's uh, the Manchester's Blues show. We're recording on a Thursday, but no doubt you'll get it tomorrow, Friday or Saturday, whenever you get around to see it. Uh, it's me, Adnan Fielden, and the one and only City Dave returning on our podcast for what seems like a decade. Good afternoon. Oh, yeah. Get ready to talk everything City. Uh, we've got a few it's topics quiet. today, Blues, uh, but it's the first podcast we've done since... The big, big storyline of the week breaking on Sunday that uh, six Premier League clubs, along with a further six other European clubs, had agreed to join a separate European Super League, which was met with um, a, a, a lot of confidence, you know, a lot of positive reviews. Not. It was, yeah. uh, th th there's a few things in the world that lasted a bit longer than the ESL. Did you know that the uh, Suez um, Canal uh, blockage, the big uh, cargo ship, that lasted longer. That lasted longer than the ESL. A burger takes longer to uh, break down in a human digestive system and come out the other end before that end. Gemma Collins lasted longer in I'm a Celebrity, Get Me Out of Here. And she wanted to get out the first day. So that, that's how good the ESL is. What do you make of it all, Val? Because I think it was a calamity. <laughs> it was an absolute calamity. And I bet every club now is just kicking themselves why they did it in the in the first place. The timing was unbelievably poor with everything that the whole world is going through uh, right now. Um, and they just didn't, you know, all these apologies that are coming out now, they just didn't have any understanding of what this would mean to to any of the fans so um i'm sure it means that I've, I've kind of been reading since that a lot of discussions are happening you know they're going to increase the number of teams in uh, the champions league uh you know some i'm hearing that maybe rangers and celtic are maybe joining a a new revolutionized british premier league or something like that i don't know what it is I think it, the only thing that you can take off it that it looks like there is going to be discussions for change about the game moving forward. Why it needed to have something like that happen uh, is beyond me. Honestly, Dan, my big takeaway from this is I am now nervous about what the repercussions are going to be because this isn't over. It's not like all is forgiven. Let's just get back to the Premier League and Carling Cup and FA Cup and... Champions League, what is the repercussion going to be? And as you know, as I said on our group chat a few times, we have been in and out of court so many times over the last few years, and I'm sick of it. I want us to focus on the football. And what if, if the FA turn around, if the UEFA turn around and say we are fining or we are uh, removing points or we are banning these six teams? from European competition or they're going to dock top 10 points or whatever that might be, what are City going to do? All they're going to do is hire the best lawyers in the world again and go to court. And that's really my massive uh, issue right now, that is there going to be repercussions from this absolute stupidity of these, of the, of these 12 teams? Yeah, well, from what I've gathered today on Sky Sports News, of course, you won't get Sky Sports News over there, will you? No. no. Um, from what I've gathered so far, FIFA and UEFA have come out saying they do want to discipline the six Premier League teams, let alone all 12. Um, and from what I've gathered so far, they want the key influencing figures at each club uh, resigned. That, that, that is their punishment from what I've gathered so far. There is a lot of talk and a lot of clubs want um, a, a kicking the teams out, which will never happen because it's just as bad as them joining the ESL in the first place because you're going to lose yeah. the revenue that's going to come in anyway. Um, but the likes of Ed Woodward, who's already left Man United, uh, Daniel Levy, who I think a lot of people will think for Spurs, he was a massive instigator in it. Uh, but Ferran Soriano is the man that is pretty much... It, it, he was the catalyst to the reason City joined. <clears throat> From what I've gathered, City didn't really want to. We were the last in and the first out. But Ferran Soriano was the main man behind City joining because he is the European correspondent for City. Yeah. Um, 
But City released a statement, I think it was last night or first thing this morning, saying that Ferran Soriano's job is not in doubt. He is set to stay. But UEFA and FIFA want the key influences from each of these clubs chucking, basically, which is impossible straight away because, um, obviously, Levy, he was the main man for Spurs. Um, Stan, um, Cron, Cr- what are we going to say? Arsenal's. Um, yeah, Cron, yeah. He's, he's, yeah, uh-huh. he's never seen in public. He, he's never. He, he was apparently the man who signed it. Um, his son uh, apparently joined the fan forum of Arsenal tonight at four o'clock. So I'm hoping to uh, get a listen in on that, see how that went down, because I bet Arsenal would have teared him to pieces. Yeah. Um, yes. But it's the same thing with United. A lot of people thought it was Ed Woodward that was the main guy behind United. It turns out it wasn't. Ed Woodward has left his post at Man United because he was against it um, and it has been confirmed that was the case um, so Ed Woodward didn't like it at all he wanted out and because the Glazers did it and used him as the pawn he's left because of that whether that is a hundred percent fact and not just a PR stunt is a different matter but from what I'm gathered it's the big men at these clubs that they're wanting out yeah. one thing I'll ask you though is through the whole ESL system, the whole reason I went behind the fans' backs and brought it in is mainly down to the American influence of Arsenal, um, Arsenal, Man United, and uh, who's the other one in the Premier League? Uh, Bruce uh, Bruce Buck for Chelsea. He's apparently another one that uh, is the main man. Yeah. Firstly, how many people in America, Americans in general, I'm talking here, mm-hmm. actually follow the Premier League and? still either agree with the idea that was proposed or disagree. Is it the same reaction over there that it is in the in the UK about the whole thing? Because it is American influence. It does work to a degree in America, but it was never going to get passed in the in the UK. It's not what we've been brought up to know, no, has it? It's, but it's not. The consensus? That's, that's the huge thing here. And that's, you know, I've always complained about, about that with the MLS and, you know, even, even going to baseball or... American football or, you know, what, whatever. It's all the same here and it's all about money, that it's not competition. It's all about, yeah, they have their different leagues, but they just play each other. There's no relegations. There's no, there's no champions of a particular league. There's no cup competitions like, you know, so in baseball, American football, uh, and basketball, you're playing for one trophy uh, at, at the end of the day. You know, you kind of go through and then there's a championship, but there's that's it. So it's all really about money uh, mm. and that's it. And, you know, it's, it's recognisable to me that a lot of the American owners, because they've been brought up with, with, with that philosophy of no relegations, no promotions or whatever, they're all, they're, they're good for it. So the MLS has an MLS too, uh, but they don't get promoted. So you don't get any of the MLS teams actually getting demoted, you know, relegated into the uh, two and vice versa. And I think that's a big issue. I would, I don't think he will, but I would really wish that, you know, David Beckham, who has now has his own MLS team into Miami, I really wish that he would could have some influence over this and kind of make yeah. them show, look, do you want real competition? Do you want this to, you know, flourish and get, and get um, fans really excited. Yeah, it's it's different, and you've not done it before. But look, they've been doing it in Europe for centuries. You know, look look how look how this works over there. And I think it could be a good thing over here. Mm. Uh, in response to your question about how many Americans are kind of bought into it, and uh, about the Premier League in general. It is getting bigger, Dan, over here. Like, you know, you've seen even with Manchester City themselves, you know, when, when they do their live things, that they actually have a, an American correspondent. And, you know, they'll talk to the supporters groups in Miami or, you know, Cleveland or, you know, wherever. Uh, you know, and NBC Sports, I've got to admit, do a really good job uh, of, of their coverage of the Premier League. You know, we have Robbie Earl on there, uh, Robbie, Robbie Musto. Uh, they, they do a nice job. Lee Dixon... Uh, which is funny, two out of three are Manchester City fans, which I absolutely love. So, uh, <laughs> but I would say in general, probably 10 to, so I've lived East Coast and I've lived West Coast and I've been here 17 years now. 
probably about 10% of Americans are kind of aware or know what's going on with uh, with Premier League. I would say about 10%. Is that general American football fans or American in general? I would just say American in general. Like they, they, they know. And I think the MLS has helped that as well because, you know, mm. they tend to get those you know, aging Premier players, Premier League players, you know, Thierry Henry, for example, you know, came to the Bulls, Ibrahimovic, you know, went to LA Galaxy. Mm. They kind of get a bit of an understanding. Oh, I better watch, you know, Premier League and see why they're always talking about, well, why was Thierry, Thierry Henry so good? So I'd probably say it's about 10%. What Americans absolutely don't understand any anything about is the concept of cup competitions mm. and European competition. And that is the most common question I get, you know, as a City fan. You know, if I turn around and say, God, I've got to get home, like, you know, City are playing in, in the Carabao Cup, you know, you know, this weekend, or, you know, there's a Champions League game, you know, this afternoon, I'm going to go and see that. They're always really interested in, well, how does that work? Well, what do you mean this is the, the top four teams from each European country and then they play off in a league and then they do this? It's... It's a totally alien concept to them. They don't get it. And that's why they make it a lot easier with American sports that it's, well, you're just in one league, you play each other, and then you go into the playoffs, and then there's a champion at the end of it. That's exactly how football, baseball, and basketball work. Exactly. So Because they have, they have in the MLS, is it, I'm right in thinking it's the Eastern Conference and the Western Conference it's known as, isn't it? Yeah, but then they're broken, the then they're broken down again as well. Oh. So you've got the East and the West, but then they break down again into specific regions. So I live in Portland, Oregon. So I'm kind of, I forget what the, the bubble is called, but Portland are in this bubble with like eight other teams hmm. Uh, on on the west coast with like uh, and I think I think there's Oklahoma City Thunder in there I think obviously LA uh, LA Lakers so they not only is it split down once it's then split down multiple times as well uh, wow. and that's how they get these groupings of these top four to then go into the playoffs and then they start playing off against each other it's just it's just what they're used to Dan and I get it but. I think it. I think it could be really positive move for the fans over here if they saw it as this makes it more exciting. Don't worry about the money side of things because if you're a real fan, even if they get relegated, you'll still go and support them, right? Yeah. But yeah. it's very, very money driven here in the states or all sports. That's why I've always said to you about football in particular. Um, that why it's never going to take off over here like they want it to, because as soon as these 16, 17 year olds, male or female, who are any good, um, you know, want to progress, well, they get snatched by other sports. Mm. They, they go to baseball or basketball or American football. So there's never going to be that mass, that, that, that mass money in it. And they're never going to win a world cup that they, 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 they're just not. Um, so and ironically, you have to say, some of their best players have played in England, haven't they? There's Pulisic currently, Brad Friedel, Brad Guzan, uh, Donovan. You know, they've got, they have had some top players. I do know one, I don't know if he's still playing now, Michael Bradley. He never left United he States. Is, he? Uh, I thought he was a quality player. I think he was went to uh, Montreal in the end. I think right. he's the captain there. I don't really keep a close eye on the MLS. I just they're well supported, but um, I it, I would love it over here, and I'd probably take a bit more interest if there was a bit more competition. Of oh my god, we might get relegated, or these teams are going to get promoted. It's all about more of picking. Some teams, you know, so Cincinnati, which is where I lived before I moved to Portland, well, that that's now got a team in the MLS managed by uh, managed by Yap Stam, and that's great. You know, that's great for them. So it's they see it more as where where can they build money from it. So yeah. you know, not to be boring, but for example, you can move your franchise. So Seattle. Uh, I think it was Seattle Supersonics. So Seattle's up the road from Portland. They had a basketball team. And then that was purchased by someone who moved them from Seattle. And I'm probably going to get this wrong, I think, to Oklahoma. So 
it's like it's like Sheikh Mansour basically buying City, uh, you know, twelve years ago and going right. I'm moving them to. I don't know. I, there's not many places in the UK that don't have a that don't have a team. But all right, well, where I grew up, in, I I grew up in a little little village, ah. Garstang in uh, near Preston. So it's like him saying, right, I'm, we're still going to be called, we, I'm going to rename them. We're still taking the history of Manchester City Football Club, but we're now going to plant the flag and we're going to build a stadium in Garstang. Wow. So it's a completely do. alien thing yeah. then. Do, you, do all those fans go, okay, well, I'm going to have to start supporting Garstang, even though it's about Manchester City, or mm. is it all about those new fans and building a history there. And that's the massive difference between British and American sport, the way they look at it. It is money, money, money driven. And the way you described it then is exactly how it came across to everyone in England, that that whole move it to where it should be in terms of the money rather than where it should be for the history. And I think that's a lot of the reason why a lot of us fans over in the UK are really really peed off with the idea that it is whether anyone likes it or not it was for the money that that, that, that's all these instigators these owners for the money was more money it's stupid and i think that's the case why a lot of city fans me included now i have to admit i sort of let in our owners and ferran soriano off the hook a little bit because we were the last in and we were the first out but we always knew we never really needed to do it we, 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 Sheikh Mansour never had it in his head that he wants to come to City and because he loves Manchester, he wants to do up the, the great Moss side or if you want know, stuff like that. He never wanted to do that, never wanted to take a holiday in Manchester. He did it for a project. He originally wanted Newcastle United and obviously that fell through. So he came to City. Thank God he did. Thank goodness. Yeah, thank goodness because. We, we might not even be here if it weren't for him. That, that, that's that's the massive thing, and I think that's what a lot. There's so many City fans at this moment in time are so short. What's the short mind? Short mem have a short memory about it. Yeah. City might not have existed if it wasn't for Sheikh Mansour, and that is a massive thing. We could have easily been a bury right now, especially what happened. Uh, yeah. I can pronounce it. It's Shinat, what what people name? Accent Shinawatra. Shinawatra, that's the one. Everything that happened with him, that we, we we were really on the ropes. And obviously, you'd know it more than I do, but we, we all know it. And those long-term City fans such as ourselves know that. Well, long-term, you know what I mean. Um, and I think that's why we were a bit more forgiving. But in the end, it was doomed from the start. No fan was going to like it. No fan was going to accept it over here. And it quite rightly got its just dessert. So thank God ESL is yeah. done with. But like you said i do feel there, there is something coming there, there is a change coming uh and i don't think anybody has a clue what that will be yeah um, I, I honestly believe dan that you know the, the the spearheads of this were the clubs who don't have any money yeah. and now we know for sure i guarantee you that barcelona real madrid manchester united tottenham in particular, those four, they cannot afford Haaland no. and the whole or Mbappe. And the reason why they wanted to join this league was that, what was it, six billion was going to be cut 12 ways. That was I the think it was 4.8, sorry. Four, yeah. four, about 4.8 million or something, uh, billion, sorry, yeah. yeah. About 500 each. So that was the only, that was going to pay down Barca's debt because they're a billion in debt. Uh Real Madrid, by Perez, is you know as he says they have the, they don't have any money. Have to offload Bale to get rid of his wages, didn't they? So. Yeah, they know that the only way that they can afford these players who are you know command those 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 kind of numbers, the, the Harlands, the Mbappes, you know anyone like that w- was to was to go down this route. So I have. I am now saying that um, I still don't think we'll get Harland because I still think he doesn't fit Manchester City's model and I still think it'd be too expensive uh, yeah. for us but I, I I can only see Haaland going to PSG I, I really really believe that because PSG didn't sign up and they've obviously they're as wealthy as Manchester City 
And I think it, I think if it's going to be down to money and it's going to be where Haaland is going to be paid the most, I, I honestly believe after all that, the only team who can afford him is is PSG. Otherwise, he's, st- he's sticking at Dortmund. Yeah, and that £62 million pound release will also come into yeah. effect next or season. He stays, yeah, he stays one more season at Dortmund and then, and then he has his choice of suitors. And, then, and I would love him to do that, Dan, because then it's all about where do I feel I can progress the best in my career? I'm going to put another season under my belt at Dortmund. And where do I progress best in my career? Rather than we we all know, the whole world knows, if he moves this year, it's about Rayola and it's about the money. Absolutely. And it's like Dan Halifax said in our private chat, he missed a penalty recently in his last game, so he's, he's perfect City material. <laughs> he really you know, is. On it. So we'll, we'll move on from Haaland. But uh, last night, <coughs> sorry, last night we obviously had a um, quite a... Strange game, in effect, against Villa. We won, obviously, 2-1 on the night. A couple of red cards. A particular masterpiece from one young man. I'll let you go on to him in a minute. Um, but what did you make of the whole game in general? Because I thought it was a bit of a... First half was a bit disjointed, I think is the best word to, to yeah. use. Um, it never really had a rhythm. Obviously, we got went down 1-0 in the 22nd minute or something like that. Uh, and then we obviously pulled it back, which is a very rare sight for us to score one, let alone two when we go 1-0 down. Uh, so that was the welcome sight. And the, but the second half, it was just all City, but all blust, all blunder, and nothing really happened. But what, what's your take on the whole game? I thought we played well under the circumstances. You never know what's going through players' heads, you know, after everything that happened earlier this week. Um, I, I think... Gary Neville and Jamie Carragher were right. I, I honestly believe players and managers just didn't know anything about it. I think they were blindsided as much as anyone else. And I think that definitely had an effect uh, on some of the players. But yeah, that's not like City. 22 seconds that was when we conceded a goal. And they were just caught cold. And that's not like them. You know, Pep Guardiola is usually so good at having G and up from the, from the first second. Um I think, you know, after that, that was the wake-up call. I, f- I feel personally we controlled the game, to your point. We didn't, uh, we, we didn't make that many chances to a degree, but we were always a threat, I, w- I would say. We always, I felt like we always looked comfortable. I was never, I, I tend to watch City like this. <laughs> you know, even when we're 4-5-0 up, I, it's, it's <laughs> the way I am. Uh, and I, I, to, I really wasn't like that last night. I felt, you know, we've got this under control. And as I said on our group chat, for me, and I don't want to rehash it, but that is the team you should have played at the weekend yeah, because 100%. there was energy, there was creativity. We were, we were trying to do something. And I know he brought on Foden, you know, second half, you know, on Saturday. I, you know, I get all that. But I feel like that, sh- that, that is more of the team that we should have played in a semi final. At the weekend, good game, and yeah, Foden for me. I was looking on BBC Sport as well. He got voted man of the match. I think he got an eight point seven uh, out of ten. That guy's just something else. I mean, we're going to be talking about him if he continues this progression. We're going to be talking about him, in my opinion, in the same breaths as uh, an Iniesta and Xavi and Messi and and Ronaldo. He he is that good. That I was watching a documentary about George Best, and this is obviously a long, long time ago now when he played. But he reminds me a little bit of the way that George Best played. Of he's mm. quite tall. There's no meat on him at all, but he's he's able to either bend in or bend out of challenges. He never. So there's, there's a there's a kind of there's just a liveness to him that he, you know knock on wood you know he never suffers you know from bad injuries but he just seems to be able to ride them uh, yeah. and get up and get on with it and his feet are just his control and his uh, his awareness and quick feet is just something to absolutely behold I mean you don't see this in English players you see it in Italians you see it in Brazilians it's just it's just absolutely lucky. And it goes to show now, Dan, from my perspective, that, you know, we're all calling for him to be playing more over the last few seasons and whatever. 
Pep Guardiola, you know, I'm holding my hands up and he, he, he got this right. I will turn what, he, what, he, what he did was he allowed, he, he knew how talented he was and he let him learn from David Silva, you know, pieces from Aguero, from, you know, all these incredible players, you know, that we've had over the years, you know, Nazri and, you know, whoever else and pick up little pieces from them and then go this season, right, you're ready. I mean, he is important to the team as, as De Bruyne now from a, from, from an effect uh, on the game. And that's not just at the national level, that's at the international level too, because he's got to be a starter for England as well. It's just, I mean, every team in the world would want Foden. I mean, he's got to be worth 200 million or, already. Surely. Easy. Easy, yeah. It's, it's, one thing I want to pick up with Foden, I've been, it's been speaking to a lot of City fans recently about him. And to go back to one of your points about him getting little niggly fouls, of course, he, he got two, well, he got one niggly foul off uh, Matty Cash last night before then nicking the ball off him brilliantly, the, the power, the prowess of him winning the ball, and Matty Cash's head just went yeah. completely and lunged in for the foul for his second yellow and eventually his red card. Are City fans a little bit, I want to say worried, but a little bit unsure about how many of these little niggly challenges come in because not that long ago we did have a really good young English talent come through our ranks and we all know who I'm referring to now and that ruined his career getting these little injuries from niggly fouls and just couldn't recover from them. Do you see that with Foden with all these niggly fouls? Because like what you said, he, he is very powerful but me personally, I do flinch every time uh, and it always brings me back to Michael Johnson. Always was. That lad had everything and injuries just blighted him. Are you worried that there might be at such a young age one little foul? I mean, we can't obviously think like that because then we'd be thinking about it for every player. But it's Foden. He's ours. He's, 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 he's Manchester. He bleeds blue. He is City. You know, everything about him. Is there a bit more of a worry about him in that Michael Johnson category? because of all the little fouls it will be inherent to due to the player and the style he is? It's a really good question, that, Dan. For, I think Michael Johnson, as much as physically, I think mentally, and I think he's, he's been on record of saying this, I think he struggled with that as, uh, uh, as much as anything else. You know, and, as, and I think he struggles with them to this day as well. And I always have to remind myself, even though Michael Johnson was a phenomenal player, it was a very, very different era at, at yeah. Manchester City when, when he was there. Uh, you know, we had that, his era was really Thax and Shinwatra. So we kind of had some money, but we, we didn't, and we, we didn't have the coach that we have now. He had some, Michael Johnson had decent players around him. He didn't have, a, I thought Alano is one of the best players we've ever had. Agreed. But, he didn't have the world. He wasn't surrounded with the world class players that that um, Foden has. And what what I mean by that is, I think Foden's just maybe had a little bit more of a, of a different upbringing with Manchester City than Michael Johnson maybe has. And um, you know, I I think you know, look at David Silva. What five foot seven, ten stone, maybe. You know. He never really suffered from any particular injuries in Manchester City. Thank you know, thank goodness. Of course, you know he had the odd hamstring or you know whatever, but never anything really serious. And I think that that will have been coached into Foden over time as well about how to ride these challenges. You know how to be aware that you know a Vinnie, a Vinnie Jones type player is going to come steaming in at you today. Mm -hmm. So this is this is what you have to do. I think he's. I like to think he's too clever of a player to, yes. um, to to get involved. Like, look at that spin that he did last night. There was five five Villa players around him in the box. And yeah, he didn't score, but he managed to spin on a sixpence and and still get his shot away. And yeah. um, you 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 can't teach that. And I, and I think this is something that he's just picked up from the Agueros, from the Silvers, you know, etc. I'm I, I'm confident he's going to be okay. There was that bit of skill, wasn't there? I think it was just early in the second half where he was out on the left wing, obviously where he was playing all game, but the ball was crossed over to him. He brought it down. 
on the turn and still flicked it past the player and then got him behind. The boy, for 20 years old, literally has everything. He can assist, he can finish, he can run, he can dribble, he can ride challenges, he can win the ball back, he can do literally absolutely anything. And the, 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 and I know a lot of people saying, and me as well, just because of the upbringing I've had and the way I've grown up, you know, not as a football, but just as a human being, him about to become a father for a second time after 20 years of age is a massive ask for him, as well as being, you know, he's the family man. He's got a missus to look after. He's going to have two very young children to look after. We are talking about one of the greatest possible Manchester City products as well as players that could ever be. The lad, for 20 years old, needs to keep a level-headed. Now, I know that situation with England early on this year might have played into a bit of reason he's not been in so many games Uh, because obviously we know Pep Guardiola lost his mother to COVID. So I think... Not that I think Pep's that sort of bloke, but the, the, as a, on a human basis, there would have been some little niggle at him thinking that you are 20, you are prone to the immaturity. But the world right now is on his shoulders. And I think, like what you said, where he's picked up the skill, the power uh, of like David Silva, Kevin De Bruyne, you mentioned Nasri, the dribbling power and stuff like that. I also think the next few years with Vincent Company. And Zabaleta during his very early days, and maybe a bit of Joe Hart as well. You know, the the old guard, the figureheads, not yeah. not his vision, but the maturity from especially those three players alone. I think that is a massive thing for him to grow up with. If he didn't have the likes of Vincent Company being his first team captain, and I think he had what was it one and a half, two full seasons under Company as yeah, his captain. I think so yeah, that I think. For me personally, with him rising, is more important. He had a focal point in company to go to and learn from than any of the plays he's adapted from. For me personally, and I just fingers crossed he stays mature. I know he's got a lot on his plate, and he's only twenty, but he just needs to because he will be, in my eyes, the greatest player City have ever had. And the way he's going, he could rival. A similar amount of Ballon d'Ors and Messi and Ronaldo for me. He, he, he's literally everything. I just hope he keeps it level. Yeah, uh, for, the, for the age that he's at right now, Dan, I don't see you've got Mbappe and you've got Haaland. Who, el- who else are we hearing about right now? Who's this, you know, who's going who's gonna to take over the world? It really is oh. I, 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 I think you I think you're right. I'll be if we can get a Champions League, if uh, and if he can just keep progressing, I I fully expect him to get a Ballon d'Or, and you know that's he's, he doesn't listen to us, so you know it's, there's no more pressure on him. He's our top fan on this page. <laughs> yeah, this just that's just my opinion. That's that's how highly I rate him. My favorite ever English player was what was and always will be Paul Gascoigne because mm. he played the game differently to the typical. English player, and I want. I think Foden can be can be the same kind of player as well. We're blessed right now at England level. It's quite incredible. We never usually have these type of creative players, and now we've got Mount and Grealish uh, and Sancho. Uh, and I'm really impressed with Bellingham in those. Not just that, we've also got the likes of Hudson Odoi, McNeil, uh, Saka. You know, there's there's a lot of English talent coming through, and it's, we just like we, need the right, we need the right coach, <laughs> and we need someone who's not going to be afraid to let four or five players in the same team express themselves. You know, because that's how Brazil had all of the success. You know, all of those years they had creative players who they were allowed to go out there and enjoy and express themselves. I don't, I, I don't mind if we lose if we play with a bit of panache and style which is why everyone loved Paul Gascoigne so much, that I, I think that's the way that, that England have to do it. Because what we've done for the last 55 years, since we won something at international level, we've not done anything, right? Yeah, we got to a couple of semi-finals, but we've done nothing by playing the long ball and a couple of wingers and whatever. It doesn't work. You've got to be cute. You've got to be good on the ball. 
and that's what Bowden is. It's it's we're blessed to have him. Yeah, hundred percent. Right, we'll, we'll quickly go on to the final point on Villa. Uh, we've just got a couple more things to go through. Um, just be wary on time. So, uh, John Stones. What is happening to him? And the reason I ask that question is yeah. on Talk Sport, especially la- Talk Sport, should I say, especially last night, I listened to Jason Cundy. Okay. And don't normally listen to him because I do think he comes out with a lot of tripe. Uh, him and Andy Goldstein tend to do. I mean, he's a United fan, Andy Goldstein, so take what you want with a pinch of salt. But they said ever since, this is Jason Cundy, should I say, ever since England, Stones has been a shadow of what he has been this year. And as much as I disagree with the terminology of a shadow, he's not exactly wrong in my view, since England. He made that mishap, mishap against Poland in which yep. Poland scored. Leeds wasn't his greatest performance. You could argue he, he, he was at fault maybe alongside Cancelo for the goal that Leeds scored. Uh, and of course, against Villa, a few people are blaming Stones. Me personally as well, he should have done better for the goal that Villa scored. Is Stones just going through a bit of bad form or is he reverting back to the form of his previous two years at City? I like to think that he's just going through a little bit of bad form, Dan. I really do. I don't think he's going to revert. Because I think we all discussed on several podcasts, I think his mental health was suffering as much as anything else. I know a lot of stuff was going on in his personal life. I think that's sorted out now. He was very, very pleased to be picked for England again. And yeah, mistake. But as Gareth Southgate uh, said, he stood up and and, and played well the rest of the game uh, after that. Yeah, I think Pep just needs that word with him again. And maybe Diaz needs to sit down with him. He's out for three games now, right? And left three games because uh, it was a straight No, round. just one game. Oh, was it uh, just one? I thought it was three. It used to be three. Three is no longer any at, at that point anymore. But I'm sure it's just the one now. Uh, I think it's at a certain point in the season, it just becomes one red card. Uh, one red card equals one game. Uh, okay. <coughs> sorry. And that is the Carabao Cup final yeah. that he's out for. Um, which, for me, I've never understood that rule. If, if you get a red card in the league, miss a game in the league, you know, it's the Carabao Cup final. You know, he's been one of our best players all season. And he's not going to have the chance to lift the trophy with the team. So, I do think that's a bit harsh on him. But, uh, yeah, as far as I'm aware, it's just one. I might be completely wrong uh, with it being a straight red card. But um, that's as far as I'm aware. But, I, I agree. I do think it's just a lack of form. We have seen the real John Stones step up this year. We've seen the quality he brings and the partnership alongside uh, Diaz has been nothing short phenomenal. Um, but luckily, City are blessed for ones where we lose a defender, centre-back, and we've got two able ones filling in now. Ake's back from injury. Yes, he's, for some reason, Ake, I've seen on a lot of City posts, he gets slaughtered by a section of the fans for some reason. He's been injured. For most I don't know of why. It. He's played about nine games for us this season. That's about it. And the games for me that he's played, he's been brilliant. I, I, I don't honestly see reason he should get doubted. You know, fair play he came from Bournemouth, but it is, it, you know, he's been quality in the games he's played. He just needs yeah. to stay fit. Um, yeah. But not only that, we've got Amerit Laporte, who was our first choice last year. So it, it's. It's nice to be blessed knowing that we can lose a centre-back and still have a couple of decent ones to fill in. And I mean, with the leadership of Diaz as well, anybody who comes in is going to be in safe hands. But yeah, fingers crossed, John Stones is just a blip at the moment. And he comes just a back blip. Up. And, he, you know, that goal, he almost got... Everyone saw what he was trying to, trying to do. He just had one of those games with that and then the tackle. His timing was just off. You know, as Pep said after the game, it wasn't wasn't intentional even Dean Smith said I don't think it was a red card he, he thought it was a a yellow with a you know with a harsh you know talking to that look I'm watching you now like don't do that again I think it was uh, a, a little bit harsh I, I think he just maybe had one of those nights of just he just wasn't quite at it yeah and have a word in his show like uh, you know, Diaz do the same thing. He'll be back in one game or in three games, you know, whatever that ban is. And it'll be, you know, show us what you can do. 
a week ago, everyone's calling him the Barnsley Beckenbauer. So make your mind up. Yeah, hundred percent. True yeah. words. I, I can't disagree with any of that. Hopefully, he'll come back. All guns blazing, and yes. uh, just a Premier League trophy alongside Diaz next uh, at the end of this year. So who knows? And maybe the seven Champions more League. points. Seven more points. <laughs> um, <coughs> eight. Sorry, maximum of eight. Um, with that, so uh, yeah, nice two-one win. Three more points. Eight more points to win. Um, United obviously have a game in hand on us yet, yeah, but. Hopefully we shouldn't need that. Um, but yeah, that, that's that's the Villa game. But moving on to a final point, another final at the weekend against the one and only another big six top six team. How the hell Spurs got into a top seat top six team is beyond me. You know that no, I don't understand that but, either. I'm pretty sure not Nottingham Forest have got a richer reign of history than Spurs at the moment. So yeah. I don't know how the hell Spurs are in there, but. Anyway, we've moved on from EFL, but yeah, what, what are you expecting from the game? I'm expecting a very exciting one with Ryan I am, Mason. It, it now. always makes me nervous about what the team selection is going to be. Yeah. It, it really does, because now, you know, right after that, we've got PSG in the semi final. Mm -hmm. And I totally understand rotation. You know, I did a, you know, a big post on this on our group <laughs> chat, you know, earlier this week. You know, I understand all of Pep's points, but it was a semi-final. And from my perspective, you should be playing your best team. Yeah. Don't worry about the next game. Worry about this one here. And that's my only little thought in my head that is he going to pick a team that he thinks might win because he wants to save a few mm -hmm. uh, for, is it Tuesday or Wednesday we play? For, uh, for PSG, believe it's Wednesday because yeah. we're playing on Sunday. Or, you know, so for example, is Foden? Foden is by far our best player at the moment. Not saying the other players aren't playing really well as well, but Foden is our catalyst at the moment. Is he going to play him, or is he going to go? Oh, he's twenty. I'm going to save him for. I'm going to save him for Tuesday or Wednesday night. You know, against PSG. I want us to play our strongest team and not worry about PSG. We'll, we'll cross that bridge, bridge when we come to it. We play our strongest team like we did last night in with KDB being out. I, I keep hearing it, KDB might make the bench at, at, at least. He's, as far, from what I've heard today, he's ruled out a Sunday, but he, should, he might and should be back for PSG. Okay. The massive so, news, but fingers play, crossed he's true. It's a cup competition. From my perspective, you play your strongest team. This is it's kind of like Mancini, if you remember, when he, you know, the cup final, he, Pantamillion had played every round and he took Pantamillion out and he put Hart in goal. Well, that's what a manager has to do. He's got to make tough decisions sometimes. You play your strongest team. You're not telling me after a, a four-day break they're not ready. All those players aren't ready to play in a bloody cup final. Uh, and you and you take Spurs apart because they're there for the taking. They yeah. jammed it past Southampton last night. Harry Kane, even if he does play, is not fit. No. So um, we should we, we should win, in my opinion, if he picks the right team. Yeah, I, 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 I'd be I'd be lying if I said I was confident because it's as much as it was a squeaky bum game for them against Southampton. New manager syndrome. It, it, it affects no matter who the hell you are. It affects you in a really good way it or does. really bad. Way. Yeah. And nine times out of ten, it's a really good way. And Spurs have got off to the first win in the first game under him. Fingers crossed. Um, I think that only goes back to Sunderland. I think it was uh, Poyet. Not uh, was it Poyet? Um, yeah, it was Poyet. Uh -huh. Yeah, I think his first game was against City for uh, with Sunderland, and the bloody beat us. I think one or two nil or something like that. So I, I always have reservations about new manager syndrome. But if I'm honest, I'm more confident now. Mourinho's not in charge because Mourinho, whether anybody likes it or not, is a master. In cup finals, he, 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 he knows how to win them. He's won enough of them, for Christ's sake. He's the only one in the current game right now that can rival Pep Guardiola. Um, so I, I, I've, I've, the only thing that got wrong with Mourinho is his attitude. And I think that washed on the Spurs players. Um, but I was not I was really surprised of how many Spurs players are actually genuinely disappointed he left. 
So whether that plays into the fact that it might be, I heard a lot of stories that they threw Poch under the bus. Now they did the same to Mourinho. Maybe they're doing the same to Levy now, especially with everything that went on with the ESL. It could be a factor, but I personally don't see it. But I do see an all-out attacking teams for both. Uh, because obviously Spurs will be going for the first trophy in, what, 15, 16 years or something like that. And City, it's, it's our cup. I know we'd prefer the Premier League and FA Cup to be our cup. Well, the Premier League three times, hopefully this year, out of four has been our cup. But the Carabao Cup is our cup. Uh, we've won it the majority of recent years. And Pep, he loves, he loves cup finals just as much. Um, so yeah, for me, all out attacking team, and I think it'll be a genuine display yeah. of your talent. And as long as, like you said, the right team is picked, yeah, uh, we'll I go. Mean, so tactically, of course, Pep is going to have the better. This is Ryan Mason, and I'm not taking anything away from him, but he doesn't, have, <laughs> he doesn't have the tactical nous of. Uh, Mourinho or Pep or anyone else, you know, he's been a reserve coach or whatever. So tactically, Pep should be able to get the the, the better of him. Am I nervous about players like Son? Of, of course I am, because he always seems to have a good game against us. But yeah, yeah right team, we, we beat Tottenham on Sunday. 100%. 100%. We've got score predictions. No, I'm not um, gonna... Because I want to see the team. Pardon? We'll do a pre-team and a post-team. Okay. How's that? All right. So pre-team if we, one. If we play the right team, basically, you know, Foden starts. I'm going to go... I'm going to be positive. I'm going to go 2-0. I think... Play like no, we draw. Villa, play like we did against Villa. I think 2-0. I... Think I... I'd have to agree with that. I'll be, I'll be going 2 0 as well. Um, Foden to score both and then Edison to have uh, a penalty saved on the line. You know, it's, if he was ever going to yeah. take a penalty, it was going to be a cup final, wasn't it? <laughs> and if, but, uh, uh, and if, Kate, if Kate Winslet is, is watching this by any chance, just be aware, Kate, that as a good luck child, we've started posting a picture of you <laughs> on our group page every day. And each time we've done that, City have won. So we'll definitely be posting a picture of Kate Winslet on, on Sunday. And, and just for the Blues that haven't got a foggiest idea what he's talking about there, for some reason, don't ask me how it came along, Dave posted a picture, a nice portrait picture of Kate Winslet and City won. So suddenly that has become a lucky underwear style thing. And yeah, pretty um, much. She's our mascot. Well, we need to somehow get if we win on Sunday and we've posted a picture of her, we somehow need to need to get hold of her and let her know. You know, she's the MIB mascot. <laughs> so what was your excuse for yesterday when you didn't post it? I, did. I got it on there before the game had finished. Because <laughs> I got home. That's not the same. <laughs> but it worked. They could have scored in the last few minutes. They were two and and I got my picture on there of Kate and, and we won. Oh, dear me. Shrewdly moving on from that. Have you got anything else to add, pal? Any any specific topics? Uh, no, I think that really covers it. It has been a massive, massive week for, you know, not just City, but, you know, just football in general. Uh, hats off to Neville and Carragher. You know, yes. I, don't, I don't like either of them, but um, I think they made some incredible... Points, you know, Neville spoke very, very passionately just about Manchester as a whole and what Sheikh Mansour has done for the for East Manchester region. And it's nice to see that being recognised, you know, by you know by a red that you know I used to drive from Hyde into uh, into Manchester uh, every day on the on Hyde Road or A57, and that was not a nice place. And now when I drive through it, when I'm able to get back home. It's completely different. It's it, it, it's it, it, what he's done for that region, for that area, for that community, is absolutely incredible. And I really appreciate Neville kind of highlighting that that as well, you know, and, and us for, for never to forget that. And I don't think City fans will. No. And just to finish off on on, on the cap label finishing at Manchester's Blue Post on Gary Neville, but it, it, it does highlight how much he's done for it. 
he has been. I know he's been getting a lot of stick with previous things and like that. But that aside, it, he has been a focal figure in getting not just United fans, not just Premier League fans, every single fan of every single club across England all combining. Whether that be a bit of banter, maybe that means joining together. There were Leeds and Liverpool fans arms over each other's shoulders, chanting when Liverpool came into town against Leeds. It, it, it really has united the football fan world. And not only that, it, it started to show how much power fans have. Yeah. And from this point onwards, I don't think fans will ever be quiet and ever be misunderstood or underrated in terms of the game fact as much as everyone bangs on about and i know simon jordan on talk Sport as well he, he says it wasn't the fans it, it was you know it, it was the coming together in a football world it was the fans the, mm -hmm. the fans were the first to show displeasure and on top of that after cap i'm gonna have to do it with a liverpool player now as well hats off to james milner as well it was the first player on actual sports tv to condone everything that's happening and saying he doesn't like it he doesn't want it and i think that started a chain reaction of players coming out and saying look we we, we don't want this we we'll, we really don't like this and hats off to everyone that got involved i know we've been putting a post out we've been putting our own personal but i'm just so glad that fans won football back for the fans because in oh, the I end agree. yeah the I mean, Football without fans is nothing. Hopefully, you know, as you know, I'm, I'm getting back to Manchester at the end of the year. I've had my vaccinations now. Hopefully, I'm going to get back. I was panicking that, bloody hell, there's not even going to be a game on for me to go and see. I mean, and that is my reason, apart from family and friends, obviously. That's why I want to come back. I want to go and experience a couple of games at the Etihad or away or get with my mates and you know and, and talk city and that was a couple of days ago all going to be taken away thank goodness that's all over and done with yeah 100 percent. right blues right. anyway thank you very much for joining me city dave as always i've got to do some more of them because that was a cracking cracking contribution on your behalf you, you you've stayed away far too long i can obviously <laughs> tell you you've been out there. There's time difference sometimes eight hours <laughs> <laughs> but yes, thank you very much for joining us for this podcast. Uh, oh, we've uh, we've we've done Tom Brunt proud. Obviously, He's, he, we we've had to take the mantle tonight. Uh, but yeah, please remember to like and subscribe any videos. It really does help us out. Uh, it, it, we've shot up in terms of subscribers, and we hope to aim to continue that to rise and keep pushing good content out. Uh, and as City Dave will finish as he always does. Take you till we die. Absolutely. Take care, everyone. Take care, lads. Bye.